how did you get into the wrestling business? How did you even know where to start? Well, I didn't know where to start, but I always loved wrestling from the first time I saw it, man. And I, I was born, grew up in El Paso, Texas. Uh, and then when I was 10 years old, we had to move to Houston, Texas. And my dad had a, a job working, I think it was a, at an employment agency in El Paso. Then he got a better job. And we had to move to Houston. So we didn't get a chance to go to the matches too much in El Paso. They were on Monday night, school nights. and uh, But I followed it from day one. Then we got to Houston. Uh, we found Houston Wrestling and Paul Bosch and new wrestlers, Johnny Valentine, Wahoo McDaniel, Gary Hart, oh. Jose Lothario. But this was right around the time Dory Funk Jr. won the championship. And uh, so... I we, we it, Friday night in the Coliseum, uh, my mom wanted to get out of the house, and uh, tickets were five bucks, so she could take Bruce and me, uh, get out of the house, make a carton of daiquiris. Back then, I guess you could bring in Speak stuff the to the to the uh, uh, to the matches. And uh, are, are you are you do you have ways on your phone, Rip? Rip Rip's got his uh, GPS up. Um... Right. You yeah. just gotta... Are you trying to find your way around the room? <laughs> well, I was trying to get a, a different way here, and <laughs> yeah. it was taking me 189 <laughs> miles the other way. But so I, yeah, oh. that, the, everything was wrong on the robot. Everything. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Go to Waze, W A Z E, and it'll get you there. there you you know, but but you might have typed in the wrong place. No, right. I didn't. I'm that's, no, I was. I was. Since you're still 22 miles away, I think maybe yeah. you put in the wrong address. No, I. I well, I, I said it to Siri. I don't know how many times. What a Siri. bitch she. What a bitch she was. <laughs> I don't understand. I don't understand. I don't understand. Uh, well. Then Maybe. I told the robot to suck my motherfucking dick. <laughs> <laughs> she says, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> well, you, you need to make it clear, and obviously you did. But but anyway, man, yeah, I loved wrestling from day one. We got we got to go into the wrestling coliseum Friday nights, hung around long enough, and I, we made it uh, clear to Paul, Mr. Bosch, Paul Bosch, uh, I want to wrestle. You can't wrestle, you're too small. So I kept going, going. I started working in the wrestling office in Houston, during the summer. Well, actually, let me back up. I started taking pictures when I was 12 at ringside. My brother, Ken, uh, who just passed away earlier this year, he's the one who called Paul and got me this uh, meeting when I was just a kid in his office. He picked me up from school, took me down, told me what he did. And I said, oh, man. So I started taking pictures for Wrestling News, Jim Melmy, Norm Keitzer, uh, Gong Magazine. Some of that stuff was published. Um uh, a lot of that stuff was published and, and Paul let me go to that, down to ringside. So he saw me every week. I brought him some of the stuff that got published. So he knew I wasn't just playing around. And, uh, I, I remember seeing Gino Hernandez growing up there too. Gino was like three years older than me. Uh, and Gino, uh, would be a second sometimes when either Pat Hatchell or Tommy Fouché would go on vacation back then. They actually had the seconds walk to the ring, take the jackets back. And uh, so I said, I I would really like to be able to do that next time. Uh, one of those guys goes on vacation. And what do you know? A couple months later, Paul said, would you like to be a second? Well, gosh almighty, of course. So I, uh, I got to do that. And then when I was uh, 15, I had my learner's permit. And uh, I, my brother got me a job at Montgomery Ward selling shoes. Good God almighty, man. After like three <laughs> weeks, uh, I'm in the ticket office and I'm talking to the ladies behind the counter and I'm telling them about this job and how horrible it is. And Paul walks had walked out of his office and he came over. He said, uh, that job is going to give you stories for a lifetime. How would you like to work here? Now, I know that sounds crazy, but he, we, I had helped Bruce and I actually helped him move from his office at 2022 San Jacinto at the corner of grade in 1919 Carolina on the corner of Pierce. That's how I plugged it on the show each week. So we had already moved, moved into a new office. Uh, he was anyway, he offered me the gig 75 bucks a week. So during the summertime, I got to work in the office 
see the guys come in, you know, Friday morning, go over the booking meeting and all this other stuff. He was, didn't smarten me up. He kayfabe me, but he was letting me see how it was working. Yeah. And if anybody needed to go somewhere, uh, I was got to take them or run errands and, and mow the grass. And it was just, I was at the right place at the right time. So, um, while all this is going on, I mean, I, I'm working out with Mark Lewin, if that gives you any idea about some of my mentors. Mark was living in Houston, Texas, off Telephone Road, which affectionately would be known these days probably as the hood. And, uh, you know, but but he had he had a like a two bedroom apartment with his 86 year old dad and his wife and, and three kids. And I'm thinking, why is this big star? <laughs> <laughs> living in this apartment right. in Houston, Texas. Mark was a star since he was a kid, too. He was 16 years old or whatever it was. His, his, Danny McShane married his sister and all this other crazy stuff, but I didn't really understand the, you know, why Mark couldn't get booked anywhere else. You know, he was working just Houston, and we were going to the gym every night. And I'm, I'm – scratching my head but i really wasn't sure i didn't really understand boy do i understand now <laughs> but, yeah but um so that's that's kind of how uh I, I i had a i developed a love for it when i got working in the office i never wanted to be an office guy but it, it intrigued me the behind the scenes stuff that went on and um from there it 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 just I never stopped. And uh, so finally I got an opportunity. What did your uh, parents, I know they took you there originally, but what do they think about you starting like in the office at that, at that young age? Did they well, have reservations well, my, on that? Yeah. Yeah. My mom took us. My dad didn't. My dad okay. didn't, have any, didn't have anything to do with wrestling. He didn't. Do okay. that. My gotcha. mom was wanting to get out of the house. I see. I think away from my dad. Okay. And uh, yeah. So, but, but, you know, mom, my mom, uh, just thought it was a passing phase and we were just going to have a good time like everybody else. But then when they saw that I was uh, taking pictures and getting them published and, and I'm actually doing stuff. Now I, I finally wound up by the way, sitting ringside with Paul uh, as his assistant. If you go back and look at some of those old NWA matches, in fact, we watch Harley race versus Terry Funk from 1977 in Houston right after uh, Harley won the title from Terry in Toronto, I'm sitting ringside with Paul. You can see my, oh, wow. you know, so all those NWA sh uh, shows on YouTube, I'm going, Whoa, they're out. we're sitting ringside. 